Hi everybody, if you're watching this video, uh, you're probably like me and you're disappointed with the uh, stock batteries, the lead acid batteries that come with the RM480E Ryobi riding mower. Um, I've had this mower for about five years and I live up north so that the change in seasons really don't do much good for the lead acid batteries. Um, so unless you're taking them out or storing your mower in a heated space, um, your lead acid in these mowers are not going to last very long. Um, so the last season I had this, it was only running for about 20 minutes at a time before I needed to charge it again. So this season I decided I was going to do an upgrade. Um, so I bought four new 12 volt lithium batteries to upgrade with, uh, 100 amp hour, and I'm happy with the results. And this is just going to show you kind of midway through the project, well, almost done with the project, kind of a, a semi-tutorial and, um, I'll put like a how-to in the in the description, uh, you know, step-by-step um, step how I did it. And at the end, I'll, I'll put up a, you know, a parts list of everything that I bought to finish this project. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're doing this upgrade is you're going to want to remove this battery tray uh, panel here. So this is access to your battery tray. And there's four little bolts here. One, two, three, and four. You want to take those out, pull this plastic cover off, and then there's two bolts here and here that um, keep the tray in place. So you want to take those out, and then you'll be able to pull out the tray. You're going to want to have something to prop up the tray on as you pull it out. You're going to want to pull it all the way out because you're going to need to lift all those, those heavy um, lead acid batteries out. Uh, here's the original. So I had the 75 amp hour model, um, and these are dead as can be. So... Um, and then here's the new installed batteries. You can reuse a lot of the same pieces that kept in um, the original batteries. So these terminal covers, this bolt here that just keeps them secured to the tray. Um, <clears throat> and then on top of the new batteries, um, well, they're going to need to be wired in series too. So these are 12 volt. So just like the originals, you're going to want to wire these in series to create your 48 volt current. Um, so just kind of take a picture of how the setup was with the original batteries and just kind of mimic that with the new ones. Um, I mean, there's different setups you can do. You can get a single 48 volt battery. Uh, it's more expensive, but, um, you know, just buying four individual 12 volts seems to be the most cost effective. So I'd recommend that if you can. Uh, and you don't have to do 100 amp hour either. You could do 75, 50, whatever makes sense for the size yard that you have. I just wanted to make sure I had ample um, in case, you know, I couldn't charge it for whatever reason for a while. Um, a single charge with these lithium batteries, uh, 100 amp hour, will do probably uh, three to four acres on a single charge, which is pretty good. Um I'm pretty happy with it. I took it for a test drive for the first time the other day, and it worked really well. Um, so on top of the batteries, you're also going to need some additional uh, wiring and a new battery gauge, actually. So here's the battery gauge that I bought. Um, other videos showed this same gauge um, when they did their upgrade. Um, and I did my research, and this seemed to be the best one with the most options. Um, this gauge... Will show you the voltage output. Uh, it'll show you the amp hours remaining, and it also just shows like a percentage uh, kind of battery capacity left. A um, couple things about this gauge is the original, which is right here. The opening for this original gauge, which is probably looks familiar to you, uh, is only one and seven eighths inch. Um, and this new gauge is two and an eighth inch. So in order to get this to fit, you're going to want some kind of tool to make this hole wider, the original hole. Uh, I just bought a step bit that can bore uh, up to two and three sixteenths inch holes. Uh, and that seemed to work pretty good. And what I couldn't get through, I just used a metal rasp, a uh, curved metal rasp to you know, smooth it out and make the hole just right for it. And this gauge comes with, similar to the original, this kind of bracket with a wing nut. 
just to secure it underneath and make sure it doesn't move. So to get access to this kind of control panel, there's some plastic pieces here. There's just a bunch of uh, star bit nuts here that you're going to want to take off to get into this into this area. Um, and then the original, these are the original, there's a bunch of gunk on there. These were the original connectors for, for the back end of the original gauge. I just taped them up and zipped them. They don't need to be connected to anything, it seems like. And I just tucked them in here for now. So if anyone ever wanted to switch it back to lead acid, they could and just put this gauge back in. Um, so other parts that come with this gauge is um, a negative wire kind of bridge piece. So what that'll do is it'll read. That's where it gets its readings from. It taps into the negative cable here. So you're going to need another four gauge um, preferably black uh, negative line to um, put the bridge in. So um, if you just go to an auto parts store, they'll have these kind of uh, negative battery cables. Uh, you're going to want four gauge. It doesn't need to be 24 inches, but <clears throat> depending on how you want to, you know, wire it up and, you know, where you're going to be running the cable, you might need you might need longer like this one is. I didn't need it, but I just kind of, I had space, so you just tuck it in there. Um, if you need more, you always have more. <clears throat> but it comes with these end connectors already installed on it, and these batteries had an M8 bolt on the top for the terminals, so this fit nicely with those bolts already. Um, and that just basically connects this here, the charging connector negative, to the uh, kind of bridge and the other end of the bridge connects to uh, the negative on the battery. And I don't think it matters what battery you use for that bridge, but um, I just went off of where this um, charging cable was already connected to, which is the front battery, one of these front batteries. So I just went off of that. Um, and then you're going to need, I believe it's an 18 gauge wire to go off of the bridge connector to the positive terminal of the front battery. Um, I bought a little thicker gauge. I think this might be 14. But um, that just makes sure that it gets the reading. It just it shows it in the, in the instructions for the gauge, how this needs to be connected. So again, you can get this at an auto parts store, this uh, red wire, to finish that. And then I don't know if we can see what actually connects to the gauge. Is this little connector here that also connects to the bridge um, connection. The other end of this, this is just the connection point, but the other end of this is just more black cable that runs to that connection bridge. And I'll show a picture of that and a link to where I bought it. And again, it comes with instructions, so it's not, you know, it's not rocket science how to put it together. So what I did was I just ran it um, kind of down underneath into the battery compartment and then up over another kind of um, one of these tube steel uh, braces up here and up and over that to keep it out of the way because you don't want that dangling down uh, in the way of the tray. So when you're opening and closing the tray, you don't want to get hooked on anything. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, it's almost plug and play. It's not as complicated as you might think it is. Most of the pieces are already here. The setup is almost identical. Um, it's just really putting in this gauge um, that adds some complexity to it. But really, just with that, you just need these two extra you know, wires to make the connection happen. Um, I also bought just one of these kind of connections uh, for the positive battery terminal. So you just crimp one of these onto the end and this will fit nicely on that M8 bolt for the battery uh, positive terminal, that M8 bolt. Uh, and you can wrap that with tape if you want uh, to protect it. Um, I guess another thing with that bridge is it doesn't come in any kind of enclosure. It's just exposed, which is kind of dumb. But So when you get everything connected and you test it and it's working, I just wrap that bridge um, with some tape. Uh, just make sure that just to make sure that it doesn't make connection with something and arc and short out and spark and all that good stuff. So 
just make sure that you're protecting it. Um, anytime I do any kind of electrical taping, I'll zip tie the ends. You know, just zip ties are always good to have. But zip tie the ends um, where the ends of a, the tape end up just to make sure it doesn't kind of unravel on you because of the heat or whatever, wherever you're storing it. Just keeps that, make sure that tape stays on it. Um, so that's it. That's the batteries. That's the gauge. Uh, another thing um, I didn't know was I thought that maybe the original charger was going to work for these batteries. So I held out on purchasing another one, which you see here. But um, So I tried the, ori the original charger that came with this, and it did not work. Um, maybe there's a trick to get it to work I'm unaware of, but I wasn't going to try to mess with it, so if it wasn't going to work, I was just going to get something that was specific to lithium batteries. So I did. I went online, and I found this HDRC uh, smart charger pack. Um, again, this is on Amazon, and... Uh, this is capable of charging any any type of battery. At least that's what, how they advertise it. So with this one, you have 36 volt or 48 volt settings, and then you have three different amperage uh, charging levels. You know, on the left is the 36, on the right is the 48. So I usually just charge it on the on the 8 amp setting here, um, just because it's it's close to the original pack. I think the original pack is like seven and a half or seven, maybe eight amps or something like that. It's it's pretty low. So I, I just made sure that I'm using the same kind of amperage to charge these ones. And um, this pack comes with different kind of output cables. And you can buy them with, you know, um, you know for different applications. Um, the one I bought comes with just kind of the claw clamps, like normal battery charging. And then it also came with this EasyGo connection, which these mowers uh, use. Um, the only difference is the one, the easy go connection that comes with the original, uh, it has this kind of plastic pin in the middle here. Let's see if I can focus that. And the easy go connection that comes with this charger, uh, has a solid plastic kind of Y set up here that that little plastic pin gets in the way. So you have really two options here. You can try to knock that pin out and use the one that comes with the charger, or you can do what I did and just swap out the EasyGo plastic ends. So this is the one that uh, came with the original charger. Um, you just take these, you know, take these screws out, um, and there's four wires with these um, metal pins in it, or three wires with these metal pins in it, and you just swap them. Um, it's that simple. And now I don't, you know, I don't have to worry about uh, trying to knock this pin out of here. It just fits right in there. And it starts charging. And this gauge will let you know when it's charging. Uh, it'll have a little plus arrow when it's charging. And when you're running it, any of the either the blades or the drive motor, it'll show that it's drawing and it'll show a little negative uh, arrow down here. So it's just nice, this shows you when it's charging. This also has a battery gauge on here to let you know where it's at. And it turns off when it's full, just like that. Pretty nice. Um, let's see, what else is there? That's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions or whatever, leave them in the comments. Um, I'll try to answer them. And like I said, I'll leave like a parts list at the end of the video. And in the description, I'll put in kind of the step-by-step -step I went through to, to put these in. All right, thanks.